Fro Gang, it's Dr. Joy here, and you're watching Delivering Joy MD. Welcome to Well Woman Wednesdays, and today we are continuing our series on period problems. If you've been following along, you know that we are using the acronym Palm Cohen. And today we're on the O in our Palm Cohen sequence. So we'll be talking about ovulatory dysfunction. Make sure you keep watching for more details. <music> All right, girl gang. So when we're thinking about ovulatory dysfunction, we're always thinking about the way that our brain communicates to our ovaries and how our ovaries then communicate to our uterus. That is a big portion of how our periods actually work. If you haven't seen my video on periods, check it out here above by clicking on the link and you can kind of get caught up to speed on that. But, but basically, the way that this works is that the brain communicates with the ovaries and tells the ovaries when it's time to ovulate, when it's time to release our female hormones, which are estrogen, progesterone. We should actually be releasing that egg that has an opportunity to be fertilized. With ovulatory dysfunction, there are many reasons uh, that this could occur. And if you think that you are having ovulatory dysfunction, it's important to see a gynecologist to have your hormones tested, both those produced by the brain and by the ovary, to kind of see what's going on with the communication between the brain, the ovary, and the uterus. So the most common causes of ovulatory dysfunction are pregnancy. Of course, obviously we don't ovulate when we're pregnant. Uh, in addition, ovulatory dysfunction can occur with breastfeeding. Breastfeeding can reduce uh, ovulation because we're making so much of the hormone that makes milk called prolactin that we may not ovulate. And so we can see what's called anovulatory bleeding or bleeding between periods uh, that can be somewhat annoying. Uh, it can be anything from spotting all the way up to really heavy bleeding. And that's again, anovulatory bleeding. Anovulatory bleeding can also occur in women who are young, who are just starting their menstrual periods. And so we covered this in our teen edition, but it is very common to see really irregular hormonal function in women who are younger and just starting out before they really reach that good hormonal mixture that we have um, as adult women. Ovulatory dysfunction can also occur in polycystic ovarian syndrome, and that is probably the most common cause of ovulatory dysfunction in the United States. Polycystic ovarian syndrome is a condition where the ovaries form multiple small cysts, and inside of these cysts are immature eggs, and every month when we nor normally ovulate, one of these cysts would become what's called a dominant follicle. The dominant follicle is the cyst that's going to actually rupture and release the egg. In polycystic ovarian syndrome, there is a failure to form this dominant follicle. And so we end up with all of these tiny cysts that are making estrogen, which causes the lining of the uterus to keep growing and growing and growing until finally there's usually a heavy bleed that occurs maybe every two to three or even up to six months at a time. So with ovulatory dysfunction, we see very irregular periods. So we may see bleeding in between periods. We may see long gaps in between periods, like say three, six, or even 12 months that can occur. And then we'll see a heavy bleed as the uterine lining sheds off. So normally when the uterine lining is growing because of the estrogen that's produced by all those tiny follicles in polycystic ovarian syndrome, we won't see a period until finally the uterus is just full of lining and says, okay, I've got to let this go. And so once that happens, we'll see a, a really heavy bleed and usually a bleed that's lasting longer than seven days, which is the normal length of a period. So with ovulatory dysfunction, it is so important to have a full workup done. Uh, PCOS is, is usually diagnosed with, again, transvaginal ultrasound. Um, also, we are able to use hormonal levels. And the important thing with ovulatory dysfunction that I always talk to patients about is making sure that we 
um, are checking some of your other baseline labs, like your cholesterol levels and your diabetes screening. Whenever there is ovulatory dysfunction, especially due to polycystic ovarian syndrome, we can certainly see uh, borderline diabetes as well as high cholesterol and even sometimes high blood pressure, which is a condition that we refer to as metabolic syndrome. So this is really important to, um, to ascertain if you have those or not. In addition, hormonal uh, levels, hormonal panel is also important to get as well. So we can tell at what level the dysfunction may be occurring. You can see changes in the hormones that are coming from the brain to the ovaries, or you can see changes in the hormones that are going from the ovary to the uterus. And so that kind of tells us where the communication is breaking down. There are some cases where we can have ovulatory dysfunction and have completely normal hormones but a hormone panel is definitely helpful to, to try to figure out where the problem lies. Ovulatory dysfunction can also occur with extreme weight loss, with extreme stress. Also, if you are doing um, really extreme workouts or exercise, like training for a triathlon, all of these things can cause ovulatory dysfunction, but those causes are usually transient, meaning that once the stress or once the heavy exercise stops, or once you have regained a certain amount of weight, that your ovarian function uh, will come back to normal and you'll have normal ovulation. I hope today's video was helpful for you. If you have questions, comments, or ideas about things that you want me to talk about during this period problem series, post them in the comment section below. If you found this video useful, give me a thumbs up and make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss a single episode. We'll catch you next time, girl gang. Peace.